Okay, welcome everybody in the group. This is gonna be a great session. My name is Tim Jurette. I'm the broker and owner of the Florida Pro Real Estate Academy. And we are glad to have you guys on board. And what we're gonna to do today is we're gonna go over some questions that you are highly likely gonna see on the state exam. Now, we don't know exactly what questions are gonna be on the state exam, but we got a pretty good idea based on our experience of what you're going to see and where that topic is going to be honed in on. Now, it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to go through this. We're going to have a couple jokes. We're going to smile, laugh, do all kinds of things. And I just really want you to just relax and, and take it easy. We're going to go over some things and we're going to try our best to give you some stuff to remember when it comes up on the state exam on you know, some little tips and tricks. So that's going to really work out good. Let's go ahead and get started. We got a few people that are coming in. Please, I want you to participate. If you can put your comments in the chat, whether you're on YouTube or whether you're on Facebook Live, that really makes it good because if you have any questions, put them on there. If you have anything you want to talk about uh, as far as real estate related, we're glad to help you out with that and really want to thank everybody in this group. Now, believe it or not, our Facebook group if you're not a member, please come in and join us. We're at uh, Florida Pro uh, Real Estate, or actually it's Florida Real Estate Exam Cram and Florida Pro Real Estate Academy. So if you want to come in, just go ahead and search for that on the Facebook page. We'd love to have you. And, you know, we just, our goal, our number one goal on this whole thing is to make sure everybody gets the opportunity to take the state exam and pass that thing. So don't be afraid. Uh, go ahead and chat it up. Do what you got to do. Leave your name in the comments. You can go ahead and accept the thing for Facebook that allows you to see who you are. And we're going to go ahead and get going. Now, this is going to stay up here so you can come back to it, which is really good. Now, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. And our first question that I want you to look at is going to be, how will an escrow deposit be made by the buyer when they're entering it in the closing statement. How will an escrow deposit made by the buyer be entered on the closing statement? Now, think about it, think about it hard. Hopefully you'll get this one. But when a buyer makes an escrow deposit, they're giving money, right? So they're giving money. So how is that gonna be uh, entered on a closing statement, on a closing statement? Let's go ahead, our first, our first answer, could it be credit to the seller? Could it be credit to the buyer, debit to the seller? Credit to the buyer or credit to the seller and debit to the buyer? All right, I'm gonna go ahead and give you the answer on this one right now. If you have it, please put it in the comments. We'd love to see it. This one is gonna be credit to the buyer, credit to the buyer. Now remember, when a buyer puts an escrow deposit down on a home, I'm going to make sure you guys can see this. This is going to help you out a little bit. Let me put that back up there. Make sure you guys can see this question, right? This question, if if you hadn't seen it before, how will an escrow deposit be made by the buyer entered on the closing statement? It's going to be a credit to the buyer, credit to the buyer. Now, when a buyer purchases a home or puts an offer in a home, what they do is they put an escrow deposit down. And basically that escrow deposit deposit lets the seller know that the buyer is serious, right? They're a, a legitimate buyer. Sometimes they'll put, and people always ask me in my real estate business, how much do they put down? Well, it all depends really. If you're really serious, you really want that house, you want to show that you really want it, uh, your numbers can be a little bit higher. But normally on a $300,000 house, we go from 10,000 to 15,000 and you can also put a second deposit down. But when that buyer goes ahead and they submit that money, they put it into the escrow fund, that money at closing is going to be a credit to them because they're putting the money in. I want you to understand that. I'm going to show you a quick picture of an, a closing statement. Okay, this is going to be a closing statement, or they sometimes call it a settlement statement. If you see this here, you can see what it says. It's deposit of earnest money, deposit of earnest money. And if you go here, it's going to be this $2,500 on the uh, closing statement. That money goes towards the deal, okay? And what I want you to know for the state exam is it's going to be a single entry, a single entry. 
So it will not be debit to the seller, credit to the buyer, none of that. It's going to be credit to the buyer only, okay? Credit to the buyer only. It's not going to be a debit. It's not prorated. That's money that they're actually pushing and putting into the deal, okay? Want to make sure everybody understands that one. Very important, okay? That's a good one. That's a good one to know because that is definitely going to come up in some form or fashion. Now, another one I want to mention real quick is you might see what is going to be a credit to the seller, a credit to the seller. And there's really only about two things that are going to be credits to the seller. And I'm going to bring myself up here. A credit to the seller is going to be the purchase price of the home. Okay, the purchase price of the home because they're going to get the money at the end. So that's going to be a credit to the seller. And then also another one you're going to see is prepaids, not prorations, prepaids. That's going to be probably something to the fact like a, maybe there's propane gas in the, in the tank outside, or maybe they've prepaid something up front. Those are going to be credits to the uh, seller, okay? Credits to the seller. Now, anytime you see those credits to the seller, it's going to be purchase price and prepaids. I just kind of wanted to cover that uh, as well. Again, escrow deposits, what are they going to be on a closing statement? They're going to be single entries and they're going to be a credit to the buyer because they're putting money into the deal. Everybody good on that one. All right. Excellent. Let's go on to the next one. Okay. Let's go to the next question. This is a fun one. This is something you're probably going to see for sure on the state exam. They're going to ask you a lot about FREC. Now, FREC is kind of a little weird acronym, right? It stands for Florida Real Estate Commission. Now, the Florida Real Estate Commission consists of how many members? Is it five members? Okay. I'm going to go ahead and put this up for you so you can see it. Okay. Is it five members? Is it seven members? Is it 10 members? Is it eight members? Okay, I'll give you a couple seconds. If you know the answer, please put it in the comments. We'd love to see them, see them in the comments. Please put it in the comments if you can if you can know the answer, okay? We really want to see it. That makes it good, okay? Here we go. FREC, Florida Real Estate Commission, consists of seven members. Seven members. Now, don't get that confused. Uh, it's pretty easy, but it's seven members. I like to call it the lucky seven, right? These people are appointed by the governor and confirmed by the state Senate. That's pretty cool. That's a really powerful position, right? Um, great, great position to be in. Let's break it down, though, because you might get a couple questions on the state exam. And they, we want to break this down because we want to know each of those FREC members. How, how are they broken down? Because it's not just seven members just picked. They've, they've got to be broken down in a specific way. Let's go ahead and talk about that particular way right now. Okay. Seven members in FREC. Now, let's look at this. There is There are seven members and there's here's one, here's two, here's three, here's four, here's five. Here's six, here's seven, seven members in FREC, right? And FREC has a meeting, just so you know, they have a meeting. They meet every month for a couple of days up in Orlando. You can actually log in. It's going to be at the, I think, the Bill of the Department of uh, Real Estate. And these FREC members meet. Now, you might also see a question on the state exam, do these FREC members get paid? And the answer is no, they do not get paid. However, they do get $50 per day while they're on official business. Okay, make sure you lock that one in too because you might see that on the state exam as well. Okay. Now, out of these seven members, out of these seven members, five of them, as we see down here, five of them must be real estate professionals. They must have a real estate license. Okay. Five of them must have a real estate license. Out of those five, four of them must be real estate brokers. Okay. Four of them must be real estate brokers. Very important to know that one. With that being said, they must be active real, they must have had their 
uh, license active and be operating five of the past preceding years before their appointment. In other words, you've got four members that are must be brokers, right? Those four members must have been active licensees within the past five years. Now, the interesting thing, one of these, it could be any one of these right here, can be either a broker, a sales associate, or a broker associate, okay? They could be a broker, a sales associate, or a broker associate. So you have one of these, one, one of these extras, they're kind of like, I like to call them like the little outsider, little outsider, right? You've got four that have to be brokers, and you've got this one that can be a sales associate. Now, there's a little caveat on this. That sales associate, the one that's a sales associate, must have had their license two years within the previous year of appointment, okay? Two years preceding appointment. Now, the brokers and the broker associates have had their license that, that long because they've had to do that to be a broker. So just remember that, okay? Now, out of these seven, these are five over here. They're real estate professionals. These folks over here are called consumers or lay members, okay? Consumers or lay. There are two, okay? Two of them. Now, these members have to be unlicensed, okay? Have to be unlicensed. People ask me all the time, why would you want somebody on FREC in such an important position to not really know about the real estate law? Well, it's good for consumers, because it gives a different perspective. And remember, they make decisions based on the whole, the good of the whole. So they do have consumers that are um, on there and they're, they could be called consumers or lay people. So if you see that on the state exam, make sure you know. All right, this next thing, please do not tell anybody, especially in FRAC, that I put this picture up here. I did this so you guys can remember. One of these members, one of these seven, could be any one of them, must be the age of 60 years of old, 60 years or older. Okay, so one of these FREC members must be 60 years of age or older. My experience tells me, tells me you probably will see a question very similar to that on the state exam. Okay, very good on the FREC. Now, Florida Real Estate Commission, make sure you know that. Look over this video a couple of times if you need to. Make sure you understand the breakdown, okay? All right, let's go to the next one. Now, if anybody has any questions, please go ahead and put it in. Um, not sure how many people are live. We've got you on Facebook Live. We've got you on YouTube, and we're glad you're here, okay? So if you have a question, please let us know. All right, this is a question. From my experience, you will see as well. A sales associate ended employment with a broker, started employee with an employee employment with another brokerage firm. Prior to returning the key, okay, prior to returning the key, the sales associate entered the office and made unauthorized copies of listings and documents and took those copies with them. What are the possible charges the sales associate could face? What are the possible charges a sales associate could face? Would it be theft? Would it be deception? Would it be breach of trust? Would it be unauthorized entry? Okay. Anybody uh, giving us uh, the answers on that one? I'm trying to see you guys are typing in there. Any comments? Oh, yeah. Okay. We got it. Now I got you guys. I can see you. Excellent. Way to go, Sean, Marsha, Christine, James. Good job, everybody. Now I can see the comments. I'm, I'm glad. Breach of trust. Breach of trust. Let's go ahead and see if that's right. Breach of trust. Very good. Now, the difference. Let's go talk about the difference. If a sales associate enters the old office and physically takes the listings, the originals. Okay, that's the key. The original listings takes those documents and leaves with them, what are they potentially facing? They could be potentially facing a theft charge, okay? A theft charge. Now, copies are very serious, okay? That's a breach of trust, but if the sales associate takes them, takes the original copies with them and they walk out the door, that's gonna be theft, okay? Way to go, Sephora, Stephanie, 
Sean, good. I'm glad you guys are all participating. It's great to see everybody in here. Excellent. Perfect. We've got a we've got a big group of people watching today, which is nice. All right, so this is one that you really have to pay attention to. If they make copies, they're going to get the breach of trust. If they physically take the originals, they're going to get potentially get charged with theft. And that makes sense, right? Okay. I know you guys are wondering why I have Santa Claus on this one. Well, we'll tell you in just a minute. Which of the following is a clause promising that the grantor owns the property and has the right to convey it to the grantee? Now, one thing I want you to see is OR. For those in the chat, what does OR mean? Are they the giver or are they the receiver? Yes, thank you, Morgan. I had this question, but it stated her original copies, and the answer stated whether or not the license would be suspended. Okay, great. Glad to share that revoked. She's committed no crime. Uh, answers like that. They will be committing a breach of trust, and potentially they could be suspended. Yes. Ah, I like that. Marcia knows the answer. Receive. So, grantor is going to be the person who gives. The grantee is going to be the person who receives, okay? Now, does anybody know the answer to this? Sean looks like he's on it. Marsha, getting there, getting warm. Maybe I think she got it. Marsha's got it. I'm going to tell you why you have Santa Claus on here. I'm going to tell you how you can remember this one. Because this was a tough one for me when I took the state exam as well, okay? Is it going to be A, special, B, general, C, habendum, or D, season. Okay, season. All right, Stephanie, good job. You guys are on it. The answer is going to be season. Season. Now, I'm going to tell you, when you see this on the state exam, you're going to laugh at me, and you're going to, I remember Tim going over this. Okay, that's what makes it fun. Let's talk, let's go to the next slide. Santa Claus has to own the gifts before he can give them. Okay, so... This one talks about the grantor has to own the property before they can convey it. They have the ability to convey it, right? Santa Claus has to own the toys. And I like to use it, tis the season, okay, Santa Claus, tis the season to give them. So that's how you're going to remember that. So remember the season clause. Now, it could be it could be written either way. It could be spelt this way or that way. S-E-I-S-I-N or S-E-I-Z-I-N, okay? But Santa Claus has got to own his toys before he can give them to the kids. A grantor has to own that property before he can convey it to somebody else. And that season clause... Covenant, they call it as well, covenant, that needs to be uh, in there. And that shows that that person who owned it previously has the right to convey it. Everybody good on that one. Make sure you, when you see that on the state exam, you got that locked in. Okay. Very good. Very good. We're doing good. All right. Let's go to the next one. These questions will be very close on the state exam. So make sure you know these inside and out. All right, I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to see if you can get the answer on this one. Regarding a principal residence, regarding a principal residence, which of the following is deductible for income taxes purposes? Income tax purposes. My throat's a little bit sore, so I'm drinking a little coffee. Which one's it going to be? Is it going to be expenses to operate the home? Is it going to be mortgage payments, insurance premiums, property taxes, and mortgage interests? What's it going to be? Man, you guys are on it today. This is a it's a great group. Francis, Ann, Monica, Sean, nice job. Sean's rolling up. Christine, Marsha, way to go. Sephora, nice job. Good job, everybody. Yes, property taxes and mortgage interests are going to be allowable for income tax purposes. Your expenses to operate the home, not going to be. 
Mortgage payments, not going to be. Insurance premium, not so. Look out for property taxes and mortgage uh, interest. Marsha's former IRS. Oh, goodness. I better make sure my stuff is stuff is locked in. Welcome, uh, Jake. Jump in. Answer these questions. We're glad everybody's here. This is fun. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and talk about the next one. The next one. You guys did real good on that one. I think everybody got that one right. Okay. Now, which of these liens would take priority and paid first? Which of these liens would take priority and would be paid first? Can anybody tell me? Marsha says, I'm retired. No worries <laughs> for the IRS. That's funny. Which of these liens would take prior would be uh, take priority and be paid first? This is going to be called superior liens. Superior liens. Okay, make sure we know these ones. Okay, this is a slam dunk if you guys get it. Okay, Jake, good job, Sean, Christine. John. Loretta, way to go. Can't see the last date. Um, the last date is going to be March 1st of 2022. Sorry about that. Oh, yeah, that's me. Me in the way. Let me take myself away. Sorry about that, Marsha. There we go. I'm gone. You got the last. You got me now. You got it now. Good. Special assessment lien tax lien filed on March 1st, 2022. Okay, guys, let's look at this one. Answer is, guys did real good on this one. The answer is going to be the property tax lien filed March 22nd, 2021. Okay, what I want you to do is this is going to be very, very similar to what you're going to see on the state exam. Do not worry about the dates. If you see the word property tax, Property tax, property tax. Don't worry about any other dates, okay? Property tax is going to be key, right? Property tax is going to be key. If you have a property tax lien on your answer, that's going to be the answer because property taxes always get paid first. They're going to be superior liens, okay? Don't worry about the dates. They're going to try to throw you off on that. When you get to the state exam, you're going to just have to see property taxes. Boom, that's going to be the one. Now, there's going to be one exception to that. Hey, Lucy, there's going to be one exception to that. When you see special assessment and you do not see property tax, all you see is special assessment and you do not see property tax, then go ahead and get that special assessment because that's the one they want. A vendor's lien, mechanic's lien, a uh, student loan lien, whatever the case may be, is not going to be an impact on you. The dates don't matter. If you see property tax, that's going to be the one. If you do not see property tax and you see special assessment, that's going to be the one. Okay, Those are superior liens and they're going to take advantage over all the other ones. Everybody good with that. Just want to make sure you guys are good. Do not overthink this one. Okay, Do not overthink this one. You guys got this. Okay. Yes, Marcia said the third one is going to be federal estate tax. Do not get that mixed up with your income tax, okay? Income tax is going to be a junior lien, believe it or not. But it's going to be that. Um, hi, Christine. Welcome on. Okay, just so we know that. I'm going to give you another question. Let's get this one. Let's see if we can get this one. Everybody got this one now? Can you see it? Let's see if you can get this one right. Which of these liens would take priority and paid first? It's a little tricky, but it should be easy after going over the other one. Way to go, Marsha, Christine, Loretta. Way to go, Nancy. Lucy jumping in there. Outstanding. Monica, Sean. Good job, everybody. 
if you do not see property tax, it's going to be special assessment. Okay. Just lock that one in. Do not worry about the numbers on the right. Okay. Would you get a question on there that the numbers on the right make a difference? If you do not see special assessment or property tax, then look at the, the numbers on the right or the uh, dates on the right. Okay. But property tax, special assessment. Very good. Way to go. So, Sephora, great job. Okay, guys, let's go to the next one. Got a smart group in here tonight. Special assessment. Okay. Let's think this one over. If asked on the Florida real estate exam, which direction is north 90 degrees east? Which direction are you headed? Okay. Which direction would you be headed? Would you be headed north, east, south, or west? North, east, south, or west? Kind of, I kind of gave you a couple little hints, right? Good job, Sephora. Loretta, nice job. It's going to be going east. Okay, you will be going east. Okay. An angle, 90 degree angle is going to take you that way. East, east, east. Okay. I'll help you a little bit. East, that's going to be pointing that way. So if you see that question, you will be able to be locked in and you'll know. Okay. If you were going to be going 180 degrees, 180, which direction would you be going? 180. Anybody know that one? Anybody know what 180 would be? Yes, Morgan. Woo! Good job, Morgan. Good job, Christine. Yeah, you'd be going 180, you'd be going just the opposite. Okay, just the opposite of if you're in north direction, opposite down, south. Nice job. Good job, Christine. Yeah, you got it. When you on the state exam, go over some of those section questions. You you have to know those. Um, how many sections? Also, we will we have a great math. If you go through the post. We've done some math posts. You can go in our Facebook group. And believe it or not, our Facebook group is about 1,000 members as of today. I think it's at 998, 998. So that's really cool. But you, I posted some math that tells you how to do this. So it's, it's real good. Okay. Hey, Christine. Jumped on there. Okay. Let's go ahead and do the next question. Now, what mortgage clause authorizes the mortgage E? The mortgagee, believe it or not, the mortgagee is the lender. This can kind of get a little bit confusing because what the bank does is gives you a mortgage and you return that mortgage back to the, to the lender. So they're going to be the mortgagee. The mortgagee is never me. That's how you can kind of remember that. Okay. What mortgage clause authorizes the mortgagee, the lender, to demand the outstanding loan balance if the borrower sells or transfers any interest in the property. Anybody know this one? Any interest? Man, you guys are on it. Way to go, Francis. Nice job. Marsha, another great one. Sean, Christine, Monica, almost. I'm going to tell you the difference in just a minute, Monica, on those two. The, mon the difference between the acceleration clause and the due on sale clause. I'll tell you the difference in just a second. It's very close. Okay. Here's what this means. You have somebody who has a mortgage on a home and they try or they happen to sell an interest in that home. In other words, a portion of it or the whole thing. As soon as that is discovered by the mortgagee, the lender, the mortgagee, the lender, they can authorize the due on sale clause. In other words, they can, as soon as they find out and they determine that property has gone to somebody else or a portion of that 
or interest in that property is going to somebody else, they can kick in the due on sale clause, the due on sale clause. It's different than the acceleration clause. Let's talk about the differences here. Okay. Let's talk about the differences. You will need to know this. What is the difference between an acceleration clause and a due on sale clause? The acceleration clause kicks in usually when they're when they have a foreclosure, right? You've missed two or three payments. Um, basically, they've said, listen, we are going to foreclose on this thing. We want all our money now. Um, give me it now. We want every bit of this money. They're going to kick in that acceleration clause that has to be paid in full. If it's not paid in full, then the foreclosure goes forward and that's going to be it. The due on sale clause is when the, the lender or the mortgagee finds out that they have somebody has sold a portion of the interest or the whole thing. They will go ahead and kick in and say, give me my money. Okay, those are the two differences. Everybody good on that? Yes, Marsha, yeah. If, if, if it's a default or they're preparing to default, that acceleration clause kicks in. Exactly. Good job. Everybody good. We good? Acceleration clause, due on sale clause. Nice job. Does anybody have a question on that? Give me those thumbs. Give me those thumbs up on there. I want to make sure everybody's got it. I like when I see those things go. <laughs> nice job. Okay. Let's go to the next one. I think we're done. Are we, are we, can't be done. Oh, I guess we're done. Does anybody have any questions? I'm going to... I'm putting this up now because I guess we went through this pretty quick. We went through it like in a half an hour. Um, does anybody have any questions? We are going to be having a cram class this Sunday. It's usually on Saturday, but we're going to do Sunday. We are going to have the cram class. It works kind of just like this. We talk about things. We go over. We have little quizzes. We learn a lot, right? So everybody that usually goes to the cram class, they do very well in the state exam. Whether they get it the first time. That's our goal. If not, we support them to get it the next. The good thing about the cram class, and I put the, it's in the link or it's in a post, look for it. The good thing about the cram class is when you attend once, when you attend once, yeah, oh, good. You're going to be there. Good, Marsha. Excellent. Morgan. Yay. If you attend once, you can attend again until you pass the state exam. Okay. Way to go, Monica. Looking forward to seeing you there. You can go again. So people get a little bit nervous. I didn't make it this time. Anyway, once you go once, you can go again. You just have to email us at info at floridaprotraining.com. Just email us. Don't put it in the Facebook because you put it in a Facebook. I get things get lost in there. Okay. The next one I want to talk about is this. Okay. Real quick. I'm going to put this up here. This is an outstanding manual. This thing is great. Okay. This thing has got everything on page number, page number 88, 89, and it goes all the way through to like 97. It's got all math. It's got a simulator that shows you all the state, all the questions you're going to get on the state. Excellent book. Uh, very, very well done. Now, people ask me, do I actually get the physical book? And I say, no, you don't. But there's a, there's kind of a benefit to that. If you've got an iPhone, on your iPhone, you can go to books on your iPhone. Once you get the copy of it, you can download it and you can put it on your iPhone, which makes it really nice. You put it on your iPhone, you can go ahead and you can search, you put it in your books, or if you've got an Android, they have a similar device. It's 266 pages. Now, right now, if you go ahead and use the link that I posted at the very beginning, there's a couple links out there. There's only one link because you're in this class. There's only one link that gives you the option to. Um, we got a hundred. Oh, yeah. There's all my comments. Yeah, there we go. The you need to put in cram two zero two two. Cram two thousand twenty two in the code. OK, in the code, please email me the link to the cram class for Sunday. 
Yes. Can you tell me who that is in the Facebook group? Uh, I'll email it to you. If you do not have the link for Sunday's class, it's on the Facebook. It's in the Facebook group. OK, it's in the group. Um, there's a bunch of different posts. Look under events. It's there. I will post it again. I think I posted it before we put this up. I really want to see you guys in the class. This is a fun day. Believe it or not, eight hours goes by really fast. You'd never think so on a Zoom, but we have a really good time with it. Um, we kind of joke and laugh. And anybody who's taken the class before and they're taking it again, they'll all kind of say, yeah, we have a good time. We take quizzes, a lot of quizzes. We learn a lot. We push through. We get through the majority of the big, the big chapters. Um, we get through a lot of material. I go as fast as I can, but I want to make sure you understand it the best you can. Does anybody have any questions? Um, let's look over here. Uh, it's Loretta. Loretta. Let me, I'm going to put my email in here. Okay. Um, info at Florida Pro Training. Com. Okay. Info at Florida Pro Training. Info at Florida. Email me that and I will get you the code for that. Now, if you've already attended the class before, if you've already attended the class before, I need an email. And then I can send you a link the night before. So Saturday evening around six o'clock, if you've attended the class before, I will go ahead and get you signed up and registered in that class. But the link doesn't come out until about six o'clock the night before. Okay, it's a Zoom link. All right. Does anybody have any more questions on that? Um, yeah, I guess we're good. We went through that really quick. Does anybody have any questions on the on the questions? Okay, any questions on the questions? A lot of very good information. Um, again. Uh, good question. How often do the cram? Do I do the cram courses? My next cram course. Uh, what is the link, please, for the order? Is it coming through? Let me go ahead and see if I can get that for you real quick. Let me see if I can share that with you on here um, for the book. Let me see. I think I just edit. All right, we get that. Remember, there's two different books out there. The one, if it cram 22 does not work, cram 22 does not work, find the other link, but I'm going to get that to you because you guys attended the class. Okay. Let me do that. Again, I'm trying to get everything going here. Okay, here's the link for the guide. Cram 2022. Make sure to put that in and then you'll get, uh, you get 30% off. It's like $18. It's like a, and plus it comes with other stuff. It comes with other, other stuff. Okay. So it's, it's pretty cool. I can't find the exam product either. Did everybody get that? Let me go ahead into my Facebook page and post it right now. Uh, are you guys in the group or I'll go on YouTube as well and post it. Let me do that. Okay. All right. Let me do that right now. Okay. That is for the, the book. Everybody, for the book. I will go ahead in the YouTube and post it as well. You guys have it. We got a bunch of people watching on YouTube. That's great. I love it. You guys have it. We got a bunch of people watching on YouTube. <laughs> in the double, double dose here. Okay. See if I can do that. Respond to it. Okay. Here we go. That's the link to get that book. Again, Cram 2022 is going to be the coupon code. Okay, guys, any more questions? You said the link 
But the cram class will be sent the evening before. Correct. Yes, that's correct. So if you are an attendee, if you have attended before, you will get the link. Now, the only way you're going to get the link is if I know you're registered. So make sure you register at info at Florida Pro Training uh, com. Okay. Make sure you register there. Does anybody have any questions? All right, I'm still looking for questions. I don't want to shut you guys down. You guys have been outstanding. If you have any questions, you can always message me also in the uh, Facebook uh, group, or you can even hit me up on the YouTube channel or email me, however you want to do it. Everybody good? Again, great book. See you in class on Sunday. I just got a question. Where am I posting the information? I just put it in the Facebook group. And I also put the, a link in the YouTube channel, on the YouTube channel. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and put my email address on the Facebook. Let me, uh, let me make sure I'm, I'm putting it on the right spot for you guys. Hold on. Just a second. Stand by. And by let me, I want to make sure you got everything because it looks like we're a little bit. Okay. Okay. Here we go, guys. I'm, my apologies. I'm going to put this in here where you can get to it a little bit better. Here's the exam prep in the Facebook group as well. I had just put it on the YouTube. That's the book. If you want the book, I just posted that. Cram. Everybody got it? Give me a thumbs up if you can see it. Yeah, sorry about that. I got you, Marsha. I want to make sure everybody's got what they got. This, like I said, this book is, is fantastic. Um, Coupon code. I'm going to go ahead and post the link for the class as well on Sunday, just so you have that one more time. Because what happens is it gets pushed down on the on the list there. So I do understand. But here's going to here's the the class link for. Sunday. Okay. I like that. I rock. I'm just trying to trying to get this computer squared away. Everything's going at the same time. I usually have a producer that does this for me, but uh, at four o'clock it's hard. She gets out of work at five on the other job. So all right. Real estate. A couple of people ask me, is it a good time to get in real estate right now? And I tell them, absolutely. Don't worry about it. There's a little bit of a downturn in the market. I'm a broker, I'm a broker associate now, but I've had my broker, broker, uh, two brokerages for the past seven years. The answer is going to be yes. Stay in real estate. Now is the time to get it. We live in the nicest state in the United States. Okay. And some of you other folks might be uh, aware of that too. People are going to be living and moving to Florida. It's going to be a great place. And there's always enough uh, business to go around. Um, not a problem. Get that license. It's it's like huge. Uh, email one more time. Tim at Florida Pro Training .com. People will come up to you and say, ah, you know, everybody's a real estate. Don't worry about that. I have been licensed for about 21 years and just the opportunity and the things that have come across my way because I was licensed there are extreme benefits. Um, been fantastic over the years. So just hang tight. It's going to, 
you know, ebbs and flows, ups and downs, but getting your license is, is a huge thing. And I think it's extremely good for you. Uh, someone said, does this cover the broker's exam as well? Absolutely. You're, I took, I've obviously taken both exams. They're almost exactly the same. On the broker's exam, there's going to be some business-related questions. But for the most part, it's going to be um, exactly the same type of stuff on there. Um, it's going to really help you out either way. Broker's exam. Oh, and then people also ask me about whether if they're moving from one um, state to another, if they can, you know, if that, that will help them on the 40 question exam. Absolutely. There's a whole section in here with just law. OK, and that's that's what's going to really make the difference on that one. So if you have a if you're take, you're coming from another state and you're just going to take the 40 question exam, everything's on there as well. OK, so that's really good. Trying to make sure we get any more questions more questions as they come up. Do you recommend the study guide you just offered in addition to the download that came with the cram course on Sunday? Yes, this is a, a more thorough one. I will tell you the download that came with the cram is outstanding as far as it, it kind of breaks everything down in um, kind of easy, easy tidbits. Um, but that but this is definitely a, a really good, a good book to have. Okay. What topic is the most seen on the exam? The most topic, the, the most important topic is going to be listing. Uh, it's going to be contracts and mortgages. Those are going to be our, our bigger ones. Okay. Uh, Loretta, good question. How should you study after we purchase? My suggestion is go through the book. It's got a bunch of different questions on the book. And I would go ahead and take some of the definitions as well and make uh, flashcards. Okay, flashcards. Very good. Um, go through these questions. There's one, there's a hundred question simulation test. And then also each, each um, unit has a quiz after. Try your best not to cheat. Go in, answer these questions and go back if you have difficulties towards the end. You might even make a copy of these. But flashcards are a huge advantage. Definitely a great way to, a great way to do that. When I say cheat, I just mean if you go back and you look at every answer, then it, it kind of makes it a little bit difficult. But again, very good. Um, I am taking the exam tomorrow. Do you have any last minute study tips for me? If you have not purchased the study guide. Now, this study guide comes with um, a couple of additional downloads. If you have not purchased that, grab that. And again, I'm not trying to sell you guys anything. I'm just trying to tell you what's going to be good. If you can go over definitions, that's going to be really beneficial to you. Definitions is going to be huge because what you want to do is you're trying to, like we did, um, like we did on the questions, we equated acceleration with foreclosure. Okay, acceleration was equated with foreclosure, the acceleration clause. The other due on sale clause that was going to be equated with. Uh, somebody who attempted to transfer or give a part of their sell their sell the property. So those types of things really help you on the state exam when you can kind of look at it and say, OK, this makes sense. What it does, it really helps you narrow down the amount of um, questions. So if you have four answers, if you have four answers, you can narrow it down to usually two. OK, and then knock the other two right out. Very important to do. OK. So do, so do the state simulation textbook then assume the practice test. So do the state simulation textbooks then assume the practice test. Uh, I'm not really sure exactly what that means, but I believe um, on here, and I can't see who it is. It's just says Facebook user for me. Um, in here is a simulation tech. Oh, that's Loretta. I'm sorry, Loretta. Yes. What happens is on these, on these, simulation test it gives you actual questions it gives you actual questions that simulate what's going to be on the state exam so my suggestion is try to read as many questions answer as many questions as you can and then answer them with your own uh, abilities and then go back and look and read and, and try to determine which one's going to help you okay okay any more questions I'm going to go over on YouTube real quick and see if there's anything over there. I 
I got okay, got it. All right. I'm gonna let you guys go. Does anybody have any more questions? I love answering these questions. Anything I can do. I'll see you guys on Sunday. Make sure you sign up. See you on Sunday. We have a fun time doing that class and we'll get going. All right. Okay, question. Where can I purchase the study guide? I just sent the link out. <clears throat> okay, the study guide's in. I just put a link on Facebook. I'll go ahead and give it to you one more time. So you have it. Make sure you got it. Nice. Okay. Hopefully that came through. Question, remotely, do I need to take another at the testing center as well? Not sure what that question is. Definitely. You're welcome, everybody. Thank you guys for tuning in. We're going to do this on every week. We got it. Anything I can do to help you out, that's my goal. Get through that state exam. All right, guys. Oh, I got one more question for, for Janet. Janet, how long do you think it will take to study and pass the uh, state uh, saying you study two hours per day at least? What I did when I took my state exam is every night before I, I kind of laid down, I did about two hours and I went over as many questions as I can. Repetition of the questions really helps, um, makes it really good. So go ahead and, and, and expose yourself to as many questions as you can. I heard there were two exams and one must be in must be at the testing center. You have two options. When you go ahead and take the state exam, you can either do it from your home, which is kind of difficult, can be a little bit tough, but it's doable. Some people like it. Or you can go to the testing center. The testing center, you go there, you sit down, you take the exam, and, and you're good for that. Okay? Great questions. No problem, Darren. I got it. There's many exams. You don't just get one exam. There's What they do is they have a database and they pull down questions, 100 questions on the state exam. You must get a 75. That could be even a state exam question. Uh, so, yeah, they pull down the questions. You answer them how they come out. Uh, there's going to be probably roughly about 10 math questions. Don't, don't freak out on the math. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and give you the link. For the math, if you want that, you can go over to my channel, the YouTube channel, if you're not there. And I can give you that link. Definitely don't mind doing that for you guys. Love that. Okay, I'm going to put this link in the Facebook group so you have it there. This is going to be the YouTube videos. Go over review one and review two, okay? Thank you, guys. <laughs> you guys, I'm laughing, but I just, I don't want to get off either. You guys are great questions. I heard there are two exams just ordered. Thank you very much. Please post the link here as well. Um, do you want the link? Miss C, which link do you want? Do you want the one for the class or do you want the one for the book? I'll put the book in and then the class. How's that sound? There's the book coming to you. There's the guide. Make sure you use the code to get your discount. The class is going to be right here. 
That's going to be the class. All right. Remember, when you sign up for one class, you can take uh, other classes as well. Okay. Math on the YouTube. Miss C, it's going to be right where you're at. You're right there right now. Okay. You are actually on the channel. If you're watching this from YouTube, you're right there. Just look for the, the video that says uh, review one, review two, and then you have all the other ones as well. Okay. You good with that? Awesome. You guys are great. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and end. If you have any questions, remember you can always email me. You can always get a hold of me in the Facebook group. If you want to come to the class, make sure to sign up quickly. We've got about, I think, 15 more seats left. So try to get those knocked out tonight or tomorrow um, so you can get signed up. Okay. See you guys. We appreciate it. Thank you very much.